Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise, praise. Are we blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. And uh, thank you. My uh, very good friend, uh, John, is here to join us this afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, brother. Um, it's been a while, I think. <laughs> it's been a while. Hallelujah. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, are we blessed to be in the house of the Lord this afternoon? Yeah. Amen. Can we once again give the Lord the best club offering that He deserves? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, praise. Praise the Lord Jesus. Just like His servant says that the Olympics is in full swing, wonderful weather. I mean, they said that we even have a better weather rather than overseas. So a lot of people are taking chances, perfect time to go on a holiday as well. And we can't blame people. But for you and me, my dear brothers and sisters, people who are joining us online, we thank the Lord that He has given us the opportunity and privilege to be able to gather together. Amen? And uh, of course, welcome, welcome. Uh, I forgot what was your first name, sister? Mylene, yeah, yeah. I think it's my second time uh, meeting Mylene. Welcome, Mylene, to um, uh, Christ is Our Rock Church. Amen? And of course, we welcome our dear brother Michael and Joanna, fresh from the Philippines. Hallelujah. When did you actually came back? Monday. Oh, Monday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I'm sure you have a lot of wonderful testimonies that uh, to bless us, to bless the people of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Can we please stand up and pray? Hallelujah. Let's prepare our hearts. The word of the Lord of which we know by heart. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus told the people that I am the way and the truth and the life and that no one comes to the Father except through me. Let us pray. Our most precious Lord and heavenly God, once again, it truly is a wonderful honor and privilege that you have gathered us all this afternoon in your house. Father, we acknowledge that our coming and our presence here together was authored by you. And so, Lord, we can only be thankful, Father God, that truly indeed you look after not only our welfare, but most importantly, you look after our life and our spirit. Lord, we thank you so much. Father, it is not an accident in coincidence that we are gathered here this afternoon. Thank you that you have blessed us with that wonderful and awesome singing and worshiping in the Spirit, O God. And Lord, we look forward, we anticipate by faith, O Lord, that you're gonna bless us with your words as well this afternoon. So Father God, it is the desire, O Lord, of each and every one to open each and every heart, open each and every spiritual senses, Soften our hearts that, Lord, may you implant it with the words, O God, that comes from you. The word, Lord, that will yield fruit, O God, fruits that will last. So, yes, Father God, we rebuke whatever works and wiles in the schemes of the enemy that will try to hinder us, that will try to entice our mind to wander off that will entice our physical body to shut down. And most importantly, Father, your servant, humbly ask you to hide me behind you, O Lord. May you pour the blood of your son Jesus upon your servant. May you anoint my mouth, my lips, but most importantly, my heart, so that the overflow, Father God, that will come out from this pulpit is to serve your purposes upon your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Hallelujah.
who are drivers here. Or even, I think, even if you are not a driver, if you have a mobile phone, it's already a default that in your mobile phone, you probably, I don't know, have a Google Maps in there. Or some people, they prefer to use Waze map application. So whatever it is that it is in your mobile phone, whether Google Maps or Waze, I think uh, nowadays it comes a standard as well. When you buy a phone, there is already a built-in maps as well in there, my dear brothers and sisters. And if we think about just a few years back, I remember when I first came to this country, this uh, uh, equipment are not yet, uh, how do you call them, they are not yet um, fully developed. So when I first started driving, I have to use maps. So before traveling, especially holiday, out of town, I have to bring my AA big map and then chart the way how to get there, yeah? You chart the way how to get there, I write it, I give it to Mean, okay, for her to read when to turn, where to turn, amen? And then a little bit afterwards, um, uh, I think the uh, satellite navigational system, GPS has been developed, so I don't know how many of you still use, you know, those TomTom, -tom, those uh, Nabman or Garmin, but now, if you, uh, the newer cars, they are standard, they are built in. Amen? But uh, like I say, when hi hi, uh, during these frequent trips to London, uh, picking up and dropping up hi hi, I find that Waze is very helpful. Finding the roads, especially when it's traffic. Amen? And I think all of us drivers, Especially people like me, who my work as well involves driving in the road. So I heavily depend, I heavily rely on these applications. So whether my dear brothers and sisters, and I believe that you too as well. I believe Sister Annie, does, uh, the work is heavily dependent on driving as well. Amen? So whether you travel short distance... Or a far distance, Sister Annie, what do you do? You pull out your sat-nav, you pull out your sat-navigation, put the address that you are going there. And what does it allow you to do? It gives you option. Do you want to avoid the highway? Tick. Do you want to avoid a tollway that you need to pay? Tick. Amen. Do you need to use the shortest route? Tick. But I think... Most of us want to use the fastest route, isn't it? All of us wants to take the fastest route. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters? And because that naturally is, if we want to do something, we always want the quickest way. We always want the fastest way. We always want to get there without even spending time in the journey if we can. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. And this system that were invented, it allows you as the driver to be in control. Amen. Figuratively as well as naturally. Naturally as the driver, you are in control because you hold the steering wheel. But figuratively as well, you are in control because yeah, you can reach your destination as quick as fast as you want. If you want, you can detour as well to, um, what is this that we normally use when we travel far? Um, in the motorway? Stopovers. Yeah? Stopovers. When, um, again, I'm gonna use uh, high high. When I used to drop high high in Stansted, I make it as a reason to visit. Um, have you heard that near Guilford, apparently that was judged as the best stopover of the whole UK? And uh, Cobham? Yeah, welcome break. Cobham, welcome break. And I always make use as a reason to go and appreciate. Yeah, so it really is a very good one. But going back to our message, my dear brothers and sisters, amen? In this world, 
where we are living in. Most people, when I say most people, it includes you and me, it includes the people next to you, and it includes you as well, people online. All of us, we want heaven our destination. Amen? Any one of us in here that does not want to go to heaven when they die? As simple as that. Straightforward question. Amen? In Tagalog, wag na tayong magpaligoy-ligoy pa. When you want to die, do you want to go to heaven or not? All of us wants to go to heaven when we die. Amen, church? All of us wants heaven our final destination. Amen? Who doesn't want to go to heaven? Remember, my dear brothers and sisters, when you go to heaven, it is not just for a holiday. Amen? People, if you have a money, oh, it's Olympics time. I have money. Do I go to Olympics? But in the other way, you said, am I really willing to spend my hard-earned money for two weeks in the Olympics? During my two weeks in there, I will enjoy it. I will have fun. But I know that reality will kick in. I'm gonna have to go back to the UK with my hard-earned money. Kaputs. Gone. But my dear brothers and sisters, going back to our message, heaven is going to be an eternal destination. It is not temporary. Amen, church? So if you are to think, where do I want my eternal destination will be? And I hope that our, uh, all our answers is heaven. Amen, church? Amen. And I have to tell you as well, people who are wanting their eternal destination to heaven, that journeying to heaven, traveling to heaven, is not journeying through your Google Maps or ways. There are no other way. There are no detours, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. There are no multiple paths. You cannot choose which road, will, which path to take. Amen, church. Not long ago, I feel sad because I heard someone talking that Other people, this is their God. Their God is called by other name. And this is our God. And our God is the same. They choose that path. We choose this path. At the end of the day, we will meet there. I don't know if... I, I don't want to put like names or identifications. So that's the message of one of these mega church, big church. It's a secret. It was coming out of Australia or it is coming out of Australia. And what did this person say? What did this, the, 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 their head says? That for their, this group of people, their God is called this name. And for us Christian, our God is called God. And that is their way going there. This is our way going to him. And at the end, we will all meet there. So from that moment on, I said, that's it. I'm going to distance myself. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Because Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father. No one gets to heaven. Basically, what Jesus is saying is, we all want to get to heaven. Jesus is saying, you all want to get to heaven. There is no way going to heaven except through me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one goes to the Father except through me. No one goes to heaven except through Jesus. Amen, church? Amen. There is only one way. And his name is? Jesus. Amen, church. 
We all want to go to heaven. And there is only one way. And that is through Jesus Christ. One day when Jesus Christ was with the disciples, when Jesus Christ was teaching the disciples, this is the last night before he will suffer and he will be crucified to death. Amen. And if you look at John chapter 13, in verse 21, Jesus told them that one of you will betray me. Amen. That's what Jesus told the disciples. One of you will betray me. And in verse 33, it says in there, not only that one of you will betray me, but I am going to leave you. Amen? Not only that I am going to leave you. In verse 28, Peter, one of the very vocal, one of the leader of the disciples, will deny me. That's what Jesus said one night to them. Amen? One will betray you, I will leave you, and one of you will deny me. The disciples were left gobsmack. I was excited to come to this gathering. This is not the message that I am expecting to hear from you, Lord. Amen. Because if you are the disciples and you are with the Lord, and you are with Jesus, and you were raring to listen to what is the new message that Jesus is going to tell you. And Jesus all of a sudden that, you know guys, one of you will betray me. I am going to leave you. You are going to deny me. The disciples, my dear brothers and sisters, they feel lost. If you were with Jesus during that time, will you not feel lost as well? Amen? Will you, feel, will you not feel lost? Will you not feel sad? Will you not feel anxious? Amen, church? What will they feel? Have I known that you are going to leave us? I should not have become your follower. Amen? Amen? Maybe you are forgetting that the last three years we have invested our time. We, are invest, we invested our service. We were so invested in the ministry. And before you forget your message to us to turn your back, to turn your back on whatever it is that hinder us, Family, husband, wife, children, whatever it is, it is in it. That's what Jesus said. How many rich men in there who were thinking that, Jesus, you told us to give away our everything to follow you. Jesus, you told us, let the dead bury their dead and for us to come and follow you. And now, you're telling us that you are going to leave us? Isn't it, my dear brothers and sisters? It seems that the life that they were projecting, that they were pursuing the last three years, is crumbling down on them. It's collapsing down in them. Remember our message in Alice Holt? Because the disciples' faith was built upon the fact that Jesus was always there. Amen, church. But what come follows, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus can see how shocked they were. Jesus can feel how depressed they were. So Jesus offered these comforting words, these assuring words to them. That what did Jesus said? Our separation will be temporary. Amen, church. 
Yes, I will leave you, but our separation will be temporary. But our coming together is going to be eternal. Isn't it? That's what Jesus said. Amen. I will come again to fetch you. I will come again to bring, me, bring you where I am. Amen, church. So in John chapter 14, what did Jesus said? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Amen. So why is Jesus talking to the disciples? Do not let your hearts be troubled. Because we explained what did they felt. Amen, church. When Jesus told them that I will be betrayed, when Jesus told them that I will leave you, when Jesus told them that you will deny me, they were downhearted. That's the reason why Jesus said, let your heart be not troubled. Amen. Amen. This the reason why Jesus told them, trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. And if it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and I prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you may be also where I am. You know the way to the place I am going. Amen. What is a comforting words? When Brother Michael and Sister Joanna was going three weeks ago, we know that our separation is temporary. Amen. They will come back after three weeks. And we will be together again. Amen, church. Same with the Lord. The Lord went away temporarily, but our coming together will be eternal. Amen, church. Jesus will come back to fetch us, to get us. Amen, church. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not convinced. Then you're not alone. In verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Amen, church. Blessed are the life of the people who do not get easily Believe. Because, because Thomas did not easily believe, isn't it? If everyone would have believed easily, then the phrase is stopped there. But because someone like Thomas asked, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? There is, an answer, there is a question. That's why Jesus gave an answer. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen, church. No one goes to the Father except through me. Amen. Jesus is telling to us that not only you know where I am going, you also know how to get there. Amen, church. Amen. Not only that we know where Jesus Christ is going, we also know how to get there. Amen, church? We are not lost. We are not abandoned. Amen. And we will never be. Amen, church? No one is lost. No one is abandoned. All you need to do is find time to speak to the answer. And that is the word of the Lord. How many of you, my dear brothers and sisters, at times are feeling lost and feeling abandoned? I can assure you, during those times that you feel that way, you have not even actually opened your Bible and read and find the way. 
Because if you have done so, you will not feel lost. You will not feel abandoned. Amen, church. The same as us, Thomas represent us. People who does not get easily believed. People who does not easily get converted. People who will ask question. Because as a human being, we are a logical creation. And as a logical creation, we ask, Jesus, we do not know where you're going. How are we to get there? Amen. Praise the Lord. In other words, we don't know the destination. And if you don't know the destination, how you get there? Amen, church. How you, do you get to bath if you don't even know where to go? How do you get to bath if you don't know that you want to go to bath? Or in other places. Amen, church. You cannot get to boredom if you just simply get in your car and keep on driving around without knowing where to go. So my dear brothers and sisters, In Tagalog, Jesus said, Ako ang daan, ako ang katotohanan, at ako ang buhay. Walang makakarating sa Ama kung hindi sa pamamagitan ko. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can get to the Father except through Him. Amen, Church. In John chapter 10, verse 30, Jesus told the people that He and the Father is one, are one. So what is it that is telling us? Jesus is not only the way, He is also the destination. Amen, church. Jesus is not only the way, but He is also the destination. Amen, church. He does not only hold the root, but He is also the destination. So when Jesus say that I am the way, what does it mean? What does it mean when Jesus say, I am the way? Jesus did not simply told them that he is going to show the way. Jesus did not merely tell them that I am a way. No. Jesus absolutely says, I am the way. There is no other way. There are no other way. It's not like a satnab or ways. Amen, church. There are no options. Amen. If you read the same account of what we are talking today using the Gospel of Matthew, my dear brothers and sisters, and if you look at Matthew chapter 26 in particular, we read that in the same night, after Jesus spoke to the disciples about the exact passages that we were talking about, He went to the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen? And he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he prayed earnestly to the point, my dear brothers and sisters, that his sweat turned like a drip of blood, my dear brothers and sisters. And for three times, Matthew chapter 26 says, Jesus Christ cried to the Father, Jesus prayed to the Father, beseeching the Father three times, Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Amen, church. Father, if it is possible, take this cup 
away from me. What do you think Jesus is asking? Jesus was asking the Father, Father, if there are any other way to redeem, to save, to reconcile these people rather than me being crucified, rather than me suffering an inhuman day, death. Could that be the way? Jesus said, Amen, church. It was not written in the Bible. But I believe that between that conversation, we say prayer is a communication, conversation with God. Amen, church. And Jesus was saying to the Father, Father, please, if there are any other way to save these people, to reconcile these people, to redeem these people, let that be so. But what was the answer of the Father? Jesus, my son, there is no other way. You are the way. Amen, church. That's the reason why Jesus said, let your will be done and not mine. Amen, church. There is no other way. Amen. Sister Michelle shared to us last Friday, Isaiah 43 by yon, or 30, 35. Sister Michelle was uh, sharing to us Isaiah 35 because the music team before they practice, whoever is sharing, whoever is leading the praise in worship, they just share a devotion that they've had during the week. And Sister Michelle was sharing to us Isaiah 35. And what stands out in there is, the Lord said, the redeemed, that is you and me, people who were ransomed, people who were purchased, people who were washed by the blood of Jesus, just in there, a way will be provided for them. A highway will be provided for them. Amen, church. And this highway is called Jesus. This highway is called the highway of holiness. Amen, church. Jesus is holy. Jesus did not sin. Jesus, my dear brothers and sisters, like, like that perfect sacrificial lamb, they were checked. But no sin is found in him. And yet, he became a sacrifice for you and for me. That sacrifice is the way that it paved the way. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. So that word that we were saying is the way, to ho the way of holiness, the highway of holiness. And that is no other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, church. What is holiness means? What does holiness mean? Holiness, my dear brothers and sisters, is where you were taken and you were separated. Where you are hallowed. Amen, church? Holiness means when you accept the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, 2 Corinthians 5.17, that if anyone who is in Christ, you are a brand new creation. Amen. What does a brand new creation means? The old has gone away and everything became new. When you were in Christ, you were hallowed, you were separated for the purpose of the Lord. Amen. Before becoming a believer, if your purpose is to bring happiness to people, 
If your purpose, because you are comedian, is to bring happiness to the people, now, my dear brothers and sisters, your purpose is to bring happiness to the Lord. Worship. Amen. If you are so talented that you can sing, you can dance, and make people appreciate you now that you are sanctified, separated, hallowed for the Lord. You sing, you dance, you worship the Lord through those talents. Amen, church. So, what is the truth, my dear brothers and sisters? We already know the way. And His name is Jesus. Amen. And what is the truth? 2 Corinthians 6, 14, 17, it says in there, Are we still Christian, my dear brothers and sisters? Or we are having second thoughts? Amen. And this message is for us. Do not be yoked together with the unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? What agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. Amen. And God said, Pay attention, God said, I will live with them and walk among them. I will be their God and they will be my people. Amen, church. Please mind my simple curiosity. Who are they that God dwells in them through the Holy Spirit? The Christians or the unbelievers? The Christians. Amen? Amen, church. We all know that, yeah? The Christians have God living in them, the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. And this is what this passage is telling us, that I will live with them and I will walk among them. Amen, church. Therefore, what the Lord is asking for us, a small price to pay if you want Christ to live in you. Do we want Christ to live in us? Amen. I close my eyes so that I cannot see you, those people who say amen. Do we want God to live in us? Amen. Church, amen. 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 There is a small price to pay. Because see, Christ is living in us. So we need to make sure that this body where Christ is going to live is clean, free of all clutter, fully painted, fully decorated, everything, fully furnished. Amen. That's the reason why God said, you want me to live with you and walk with you? Jesus said, then, therefore, come out from among them and be separated. No. Come out from the world. Amen, church. Come out from the world and be separated. Touch no unclean things and I will receive you. Amen, church. Well, the Lord even said, isn't it, that if your eyes is causing you into sinning, Pluck them eyes. It's better to enter heaven blind. If your arms are causing you to sin, then take away your arms. It's better to enter heaven with one arm. It's simply what the Lord is saying as my dear brothers and sisters is, the Lord demands holiness. The Lord is demanding holiness from us. And that is the truth. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way. And he also said that he is the truth. And that is the truth, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. Let us not water it down. Truth is not subjective to what 
we feel. Truth is not subjective to our own interpretation. Whenever we want it, however we want it, no, my dear brothers and sisters, we cannot edit the truth. We cannot soften the truth. We cannot lighten the message of the gospel just for the sake of church growth, just to favor a group of people, just to favor ourselves, just to favor one person. We cannot water down the truth, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. A lot of people, you want to grow church? You want to, to grow? You want to become, you want, this, you want this church to be filled? Is that what you want? If that is our purpose, we know the ingredients for that. Believe me, if you want to water down the truth, this church will be filled. The whole world wants peace. And who doesn't? You and me. Who does not want peace? The whole world wants peace. The whole world wants unity. If the world, in the family, in the church, if we want peace, if we want unity, then more than preaching unity and peace, we need to pursue truth. <laughs> we need to pursue truth, my dear brothers and sisters. Truth is unchangeable, whether you are a single person or you are married. Whether you are a parent or whether you are a children. Whether you grow up in this country or you were coming overseas. Truth is unchangeable. Truth is not subjective, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen. And as a Christian, as a believer, our role is simply to preach the word. Amen. Our role is to simply preach the word. Amen. This is the downfall of many people, many Christians, many believers. Because sometimes truth is subjective to them. Truth is dependent on my emotion. Truth is dependent on my situation. Your truth is different from my truth. Amen. But let us not forget, my dear brothers and sisters, that two opposite truth cannot both be true. Amen. That's the reason why that Jesus said, I am the truth. Jesus is the truth. Amen, church. Jesus did not claim to be his truth. No. Jesus said, I am the truth. Amen, church. Jesus did not merely teach us that he is the truth, that his words are true. Yes, he did both. But more than that, he said, I am the truth. Amen, church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do we still want to become a Christian? Amen. 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 I feel like, Pastor, you did, we, you did not came to bless us. You came to discourage us. But my dear brothers and sisters, here comes the life. Amen, church? Because if you want life, if you truly want eternal life with Christ, isn't it the Lord says that if gold is tested, if all these expensive 
commodities are tested. How much is your pay, faith which is more precious? Amen, church. We need our faith to be tested. Amen. And not only our faith. We need our knowledge and our understanding of the Lord to be tested as well. And we need to test that in parallel alongside his words. Last one. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. And most importantly, he is the life as well. Amen, church. When, Jesus, when John wrote this gospel that we are using this afternoon, in John chapter 1 verse 4, John started saying, In him or in Jesus was life. Amen, church. And he is the light of men. Amen, church. So Jesus is life. Amen. Jesus is life. That is how John started the, his account of the gospel. And how did he end it? If you go to John chapter 21, verse 25, it says in here that Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have a room for the books that would be written. Amen. So the Gospel of John started introducing as Jesus being the life. And he ended his Gospel saying that there are many other things as well that Jesus have done, that if everything of them were written, there were no catalog, there will be no library in the world enough to contain it. Amen, church? So the question now being is, what are those that were written? Amen. Because it says that if everything were written, so now, Jesus, what are those that were written? Why is it that you were so selective on the things that were written? Amen, church. So if we go back to John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31, it says in here, my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus did many miraculous signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. Amen. So he says, what John is saying, John started that Jesus is the life. And after his gospel, after his account, John is saying that this is what I am afford to write. There were many other things that I wanted to write perhaps. There were many other things that Jesus has done. That if you are to write them all, there will be no catalog enough to accommodate them. Amen. But he said, these things, those written, were written so that, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us, he said, those written would be enough for the purpose. And what is the purpose, my dear brothers and sisters? For us to believe that in Christ we may have life. Amen, church. That's what how he started. Jesus is the life. And he gave an argument proving what did he say that Jesus is the life. Amen, church. So my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is more than enough. There is no more further explanation to explain to us why He is the life. 
Why, if we want to know the way in the truth that He is the answer. Amen, church. Jesus is the life. He is the author of life. Acts 3.15. Amen. And He gave that life to us. Amen, church. Amen. You know, this is the remarkable thing. Jesus is the life. Amen. And in order for us to have life, He has to give Himself to us. Because He is the life. Amen, church. How can we achieve life without the life giving Himself to us? John 3.16 if you do not know any passage in the Bible, it is summarized in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, to every one of you, including people who are online, including to the first timer, I want to plead to you that Jesus loves you. Amen. If you are not convinced, He gave His life for you. Jesus did not die for someone else. He died for you. Amen. Do not think that Jesus died for your neighbor. Do not think that Je Jesus died for any other people. Jesus died for everyone, especially you. Amen, church. You are not exempted. Amen. Again, let us remind ourselves that when we die, we want to go to heaven. Amen. When we die, we want to go to heaven. None of us in here does not want to go to heaven when, we die, when they die. Therefore, again, once again, we want to go to heaven. There is only one way. His name is Jesus. All we need to do is walk in that way. All we need to do is accept the truth. Amen, church. May God bless us all. Let us please stand up. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Again, my dear brothers and sisters, I know you as a person. I am familiar with you as a person. But whatever it is, even me, you can see me, you know me as a person. But whatever it is that is in my heart, you do not know. And so is with me. Whatever it is that is in your heart, I do not know. But we have a God who is all-knowing. We have a God who discerns and knows what we are going through. We have a God that we cannot hide from. All we need to do is open in Tagalog magpakatotoo lang tayo. Can I ask each and every one to do not mind people next to you? If it helps, just simply close your eyes and focus to the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters, this is more than religion. This is more than affiliation. This afternoon, the Lord is giving us a time to talk to Him directly. I am not even going to claim to be, oh, I will introduce you to the Lord. I'm not even going to claim to say that, okay, I will bring you close to the Lord. No. 
This time, it is between us and the Lord personally. And having identified that, Lord, you know when I die, I want to go to where you are. When I die, I want to spend eternity with you. When I die, I just want to simply soak in your presence. I just want to simply bask, worshiping you. So therefore, O oh God, I come to you this afternoon without any pretensions. I come to you this afternoon, Lord, renewing my covenant with you. I come to you this afternoon, Father God, no holds barred. Come and search my heart. Come and search my soul. Come and know the spirit that is in me. Come and seek my deepest grievances. And Lord, anything that does not belong to you, anything in there, Father God, that can hinder me in coming to you, Anything, Father God, that you can see there that does not reflect or represent you. Father, I pray. Father, I allow you to uproot it, to take it away. Take it away, Lord. I don't want to be disturbed. I don't want to be hindered by it anymore. Anything that does not please you in my life, Father, I am willing to give up. And Lord, I just want to know you. I just want to accept you. And I just want to embrace you as the way, as the truth, and as the life. Thank you that you are both the way and the destination. Thank you, Lord, that it is you who can satisfy my longing and desire. Thank you that it is you that can enlighten my confusion. Thank you that it is you that can lighten up the load. Thank you, Lord, that it is you who can show me the way and who can pave me the way. Thank you, Father, that your words are true and that you are the truth. Thank you, Father God, for the truth that even I felt it, but I know that you have never left me nor have forsaken me. You never did, and you never will. And Lord, thank you so much. I surrender my life unto you once more. I surrender my future to you once more. I surrender my eternity to you once more. And all the people of God who can relate, who has prayed, or who were represented by that prayer, just tell and confess audibly, saying, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Church, may God bless us all. I want to direct you to the word of the Lord. If you have your Bible, it is about time to open them again. If you don't have a Bible, go online and you can find whatever translation that can be suit you. But, we already know that He is the way, that He is the truth, and He is the life. All we need to do now, my dear brothers and sisters, is to do our part. Amen. Amen. Spend time with the Lord. Read His words. Let His words talk to us. May God bless you all. Thank you for coming.
to worship and fellowship with us this afternoon. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, can I ask people, we still have a few minutes, if someone, if the Lord is leading you to approach someone to pray for them, or if you want to ask a prayer for someone, please, let's spend this, let's maximize our few minutes remaining. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.